Well, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Papa's Workshop. These are for Adam, Brady, Luke, and Brenna. Today we're on kind of a road trip. We're not in the workshop. Uh, we're up in my uh, office or den, and we're going to talk about uh, designing and planning your project. Uh, but first, we've got to hear from our assistant. There she is, sound asleep under, the, under my desk. She likes to be underfoot. Anyway, let's get to work. Okay, so designing a project. You're going, you're going to have, first you've got to think about what it is you want to build. Uh, once you decide that, then you have to kind of decide on what it's going to look like, what the style is, what the size is going to be. Uh, in today's world, you've got the internet, and that's such a wonderful tool. Uh, if you decide you want to build a coffee table or a nightstand, uh, whatever, you can look it up on the internet and get a thousand pictures. And you can look through all those pictures and get an idea of what it is you'd like. Uh, then once you've decided on that, you've got to kind of sketch it out. You know, do, do, a, do some sketches on how you'd like it to look. Doesn't have to be to scale or anything, just kind of just doodle and get ideas of what you want and how you want to do it. Uh, you can draw in perspective. <laughs> um, that, is, that helps me sometimes to kind of visualize the, the project. And by perspective, I mean, uh, if this is the horizon, you're looking out, you see the horizon, that's the horizon line. And basically you pick an imaginary point on either point and then say, this is the, you're going to have your project kind of turned. We're going to do just a little simple table, but this would be the, the center of it. So now we're going to start and I'm going to kind of go from that point out to there and then this will be the same we'll make the top of the table right here and I'm going to try to go to that point too and so the top's got a that's kind of the top and then we got to have legs right so there's one leg coming down and then another leg is coming here another leg there and then from this point we're going to that horizon point again and then this one is going to go over and then of course you'd have that that fourth leg coming down and again it'd be in a line right there see so that's an easy way to kind of visualize your your project in 3d and with practice, you can do that without having to draw the line and the two dots. But uh, that's a real quick, easy way of doing perspective. Um, and like I said, basically you need to sketch it out. You've kind of designed, designed on what you want. Um, there's different period furnitures, uh, you know, like arts and crafts or, uh, you know, the stuff I make is usually Queen Anne or Chippendale, which is pretty ornate. Uh, but there's just all sorts of choices, and the Internet is the best resource for that. Uh, so once you've decided on what it's going to look like, well, then you've got to actually make some, some drawings. But uh, before you start doing that, I think the best thing to do is to make some mock-ups. Like if you're doing a, uh, a table... There are standards for how high a table should be, depending on whether it's a coffee table or a regular table. You can look up furniture standards and they give you chair sizes, furniture, you know, standard furniture, what their standard sizes are. So that's always a good starting point. But if you're going to make something like a nightstand that you want to customize for your bed, your height of your bed, you can get some cardboard boxes and just set it and get a height that you think is going to work. So that's kind of your height and the same thing you can make a cardboard top of how big you want it to be um, you can also make if it's a little more ornate you can make a, a, a full size mock-up out of cardboard I, I save big cardboard boxes I cut the sides out and I save it just just for doing that because sometimes it's 
It's, uh, it's also nice for drawing out something full size on a big sheet of ply or a big sheet of cardboard or plywood. But you can also use foam board. Here's one I got. Brady might recognize this. This was just a form, foam board model, uh, quarter inch scale, which just means a quarter inch equals an inch. And it kind of helps to make it look. And it's just taped together and drawn on, but that, that helps you in your design, your design phase. And then once you've got that done, then you have to start making some, some drawings. And this is when you need to do it to scale. You can do it on a pad, a graph paper like this. You don't have to have a drawing table like this. Uh, my first job, first paying job when I was in high school over a summer was a draftsman. Uh, and then in, in the first, uh, first couple of years of college, I, I worked as a draftsman, uh, so that's I've had this I've had this piece since I was in high school, and uh, I enjoy drawing on the drawing the whole project out. So that's part of the fun for me. But you don't have to do that. You can use just a piece of graph paper like this, and each block can represent whatever you want it to represent, depending on the size of your project. One block could be an inch if it's a big project. Uh, it could be every every two blocks is an inch, so the block represents a half an inch. You know, you can kind of scale your project. And what you want to do, the standard way of drawing it out is to have the, we'll, we'll do our table again. This is the front. And then is you've taken that front and then you're gonna turn it like you were looking at this side. So then here would be the side of the table, and it's a little narrower, and then up above it's just like you were looking down, and so this would be the top of the table. That's the standard way of doing it. And then you you can you know make a dimension that that's 36 inches. And you kind of get some rough sizes from that, what your, what your pieces are going to be. You have to figure out what your pieces are going to be. Um, so, of course, I do that on the, on, the, on the drafting table, but you can do that on this. But you can make just this front view on one piece of paper, take another piece of paper and do the side view. And if you need to, you can do another piece that way to get a little bit bigger. So you can, because from this, you have to figure out what the sizes are of all the pieces that you're going to make. So in this case, with our table, we would have to figure out what our four legs, how tall they were, and how thick they are, what they're going to look like. And the same with the top. Is it going to be one piece of plywood across the top, or is it going to be like, you know, a frame and panel type of thing. Uh, so then there would be these four pieces here plus the center. And so you have to know all of that. You have to figure this out and, uh, and make your bill of material. Uh, today, in today's world with the internet and the computers, the best option for you guys is probably a program called SketchUp. It's free. Uh, and there's all sorts of, of information on how to use it. I mean, it's a, it's a complicated program, but once you use it for a little bit, it's basically a CAD program. It works in, you're working, you can rotate it so that it looks like this, just one view, maybe the front or the side or the top, but it's, you turn it so that it's like in the perspective. It, it's in a 3D, you're modeling in a 3D, uh, perspective and what is really nice about that kind of a thing is if you decide that the table needs to be a little bit wider or shorter you can do that really easy whereas on the drafting table you'd have to erase everything <laughs> and move it uh, it's much easier and there are add-ins that you can get to uh, help you worth the bill of material the other thing when you're doing the bill of material is you have to allow for the joinery if 
the legs here in this case, if the legs have a peg that go up into the top, then they have to be a little bit longer. Uh, and if there was a stretcher across the, the bottom, if that has mortise and tendon that goes all the way through the legs, you'll have to add that to, the, to that part. So you have to know how, what the joinery is going to be. Um, that SketchUp actually has a, uh, a way that you can take a picture of a, of a piece of furniture that's, that's uh, on an angle a little bit. Let me see here. Look. There's a picture of the, the chest that I built. It's, see, it's in perspective. We can see that corner, and these are going out to points. So you could take a picture that has two sides of an object and put it in SketchUp. As long as the picture hasn't been cropped or modified in any way, uh, it allows you to go to, to uh, SketchUp. And what did I do with that? We've got our object that we have a picture of, so it's got some legs on it. Um, you can put it in SketchUp and it allows you to identify this point and this point and then this point and this point and it will project out where the theoretical uh, horizon is. And it, then you do the same with these points here and it figures this out, and then from that, it will import that thing into your, as a SketchUp model. So it gives you a big head start on the size of things. You, you tell it, you know, if, you've, if you know the size of it, then you can tell it it's this, this much and this much, and it will, uh, it will figure it out for you. But the picture has to be not modified in any way. If it's been stretched or, or uh, and oftentimes in books like this, they have been messed with, and uh, it doesn't always work. But it can get you close, anyway. So, I think in today's world, the SketchUp is probably a great, a great tool. But I am still old school, and uh, I still enjoy the, the drawing of it. Um, what else we got here? Uh, okay, so. Build material, you have to figure out all the wood that you're going to need, and then you need to, to probably add a little bit extra. And, uh, I mean, you can get pine and oak at Home Depot or the other box stores, but if you go to a, a hardwood store, the hardwood is sold in board feet. Uh, and a board foot is one inch thick, 12 by 12 or one foot by one foot. Okay, hardwood is sold in board foot, like I said, and that is the one foot by one foot at one inch thick. Um, but they don't call it one inch thick. Um, one inch is four quarters, right? So you buy lumber is in quarters as far as thickness goes. So. You got four quarters, you could have uh, six quarters, eight quarters, goes all the way up, keeps going up, 16 quarters, uh, whatever thick you want, and that affects your board feet. If you get eight quarter, uh, a board foot is only going to be, since it's twice as thick, right? It's twice as thick, it's only going to be six inches by 12 inches. That's a board foot if it's eight quarter. So it's a volume thing. Uh, so at the, hard, at the hardwood store there, the, the lumber is not going to be, if you buy it at a box store, it's all going to have smooth edges, all parallel you're going to buy. It's going to be a one by eight. It's going to be seven and a quarter inches wide by three quarter inches thick by eight foot, right? At the hardwood store, it doesn't come that way. Usually, they can be any length, but they're mostly around 10 or 12 foot, some of them. But it might have one edge that's kind of straight, but the other edge could be all over the place. Depends on the tree. Uh, and if it's rough, it 
just like the name implies, it's going to be rough. So rough for a quarter, it's going to be an inch thick, maybe a little bit more. Um, it's, it's, it's an inch thick when they cut it at the mill, and then it that gets dried, it shrinks a little bit. And then, of course, if they mill it flat, it's going to be thinner. And so usually you get, uh, if you get plain four quarter, it's going to be just over three quarter. They give you a little bit more to plain, but it usually isn't enough for me. I usually buy the rough. Uh, it's more work, but I know I end up with boards however I, I want them to be. But so they'll have prices on their lumber, like at six board foot. Six dollars a board foot, um, so you'll have to. You usually they'll have it. Uh, the places I go, they'll have a, a something written down on what what a particular board, how many board feet it is. But uh, in some other cases, you'll have to either guess at that, you know, knowing how it works, uh, and to what the final price of that board is. So that's the two cents on board foot. Uh, I usually buy it rough because rough is cheaper, uh, but that means I have to plane it down, which is means more work, more wear and tear in my machines, but I'm sure then my, my lumber is straight. Uh, if you buy it already planed and it's got a little bit of ripple to it uh, or a warp to it, you, you, by the time you straighten it out, you're gonna be under three quarters, so I usually start out thick and work down. And that's another thing you want to, when you do get your lumber, you want to keep it in your shop, wherever you're going to build it. You want to have it there for a few days or a week or two uh, so it can acclimate to the, the humidity in your shop. Uh, if, you, if you plane it right away, it'll change. If you plane it and then you wait two months before you do anything with it, it may change. Wood moves. Uh, so you've got your, you make your bill of material, you have to decide what kind of wood you want, what, what color is it going to be. Uh, the, the color of your project is going to kind of determine what, the, what species of wood you're going to be. Then, you know, you can, get, uh, you can get a light colored wood like oak or uh, birch or maple and you can, or pine and you can stain it or dye it about any other color. Uh, they all have different looks and that comes with uh, you know the experience and you can paint stuff you can make stuff out of out of I would use an inexpensive wood like poplar or pine uh, and if I was going to paint it and then you can paint it any color you want so but you have to make all those decisions uh, you know if you're going to paint something it makes it a lot easier to make paint will cover a multitude of errors uh, so you can you know, you kind of have to know what you're going to do. So that's my two cents worth on planning and design. Um, that, that's a whole different world when you're coming up with design. If you're trying to come up with something original, um, there's a lot of research that could be done if you're trying to make something that's accurately to some style. Um, so I guess about it. You guys hang in there. I'm sorry this one's late, but we're... Uh, we're remodeling the bedroom, so we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.